What's up guys, day number 10 here, and today we move into Ruth chapter 2, and we look at a verse, uh, excuse me, the second verse of chapter 2, and it says this, One day Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Let me go out into the harvest fields to pick up the stalks of grain left behind by anyone who is kind enough to let me do it. Now here's what the devotion says. A good friend will often know what you need before you do, and they might even attempt to meet that need before you think to act on it. Call it a hunch, intuition, or discerning insight from the Holy Spirit. Somehow, a good friend can see what's not seen yet and respond quickly. This is exactly how Ruth responded in the passage. Um, <clears throat> in this passage, Ruth and Naomi arrived at Judah, but they had no food, no work, and no immediate connections. Ruth decided that she would go out to the local fields to glean. The process, which in parentheses says, the process of gathering leftover crops that had either not been harvested or were left behind and bring back something that would sustain the two of them until they were able to get situated. What needs do you see in the lives of your friends, and how can you respond? Now, let me take a second to kind of explain this a little bit further. So the whole process of gleaning, it was something that God had kind of implemented or instituted uh, through the nation of Israel, where a farmer would have a field, and uh, they would harvest their crop, and any crop that was you know, fell off like they're out of their basket or, or, or kind of was left behind on, on after they, you know, harvested if it was left on the vine or left on the plant. Um, the process of gleaning was made for those who had uh, maybe less, you know, were less fortunate or didn't have the means. Uh, they were able to go into the fields to glean. They were able to take that. In fact, God had prohibited farmers and owners of the land uh, to pick up something that fell or to go back after they had harvest, harvested the crop. In fact, that was intended so that the poorer people or those less fortunate would be able to have uh, to go into fields and look for something. And so Ruth and Naomi arrived to Judah. They've got no food, no immediate connection. And Ruth just says, you know what, Naomi, let me go do something. Give me permission to go out in the field. Let me harvest uh, let me get some, you know, crop that's been left behind on the harvest if someone would kindly allow me. And let me get for us what we need. And I think it's a beautiful picture for friendship because a lot of times, you know, friendship is about recognizing the need of that other person and saying, well, let me go ahead and do this. Let me solve this problem. Let me take care of this for this friend. Let me meet them where they are. Let me uh, see the need and meet the need before they even think about the need. And I know in my life that the times that, that has happened where a friend has just called and said, hey, you know what? Here's what we do. I know things are difficult right now, so here's what I've done. I've set up this so we can go meet up. Uh, literally earlier this year when my, when my dad passed away, um, I had a friend who lives in North Carolina, uh, and he was scheduled to fly out to uh, the United Kingdom. He was scheduled to fly out in January uh, to the U.K., and he was, had a layover in Newark Airport, which is not far from where I live here in New York City. And as soon as my dad passed away, he just reached out to me and said, hey, listen, I was supposed to fly out to Newark uh, or through Newark. And so I changed my flight so that I fly out a day later so that I could spend the day in New York City and we could just meet up, um, get together, get some food uh, and just, you know, I can be a support for you. And I didn't ask him for that. I didn't tell him I needed that. He just went ahead and did it on his own. And that day, that time that we spent together was so meaningful for me. Uh, and so it just forces, you know, it causes me to think about like my own relationships. What needs do I see in the lives of my friends and how can I meet that need or uh, seek to fulfill that need before they even realize they need to express it? So anyway, I hope that that means something to you. I hope that you can take the same approach with your relationships and look for the needs of others uh, and attempt to meet those needs. And then we'll continue with day 11 tomorrow here on Everyday Faith.